Hey guys and welcome back to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we're going to be comparing the pen tool and curvature tools in Illustrator and how best to use them. So let's jump straight in now and have a look at them. Okay so before we start we would recommend pausing this video and taking time to download the template file that we're working from here in Adobe Illustrator. This means you can work along with us and see which tool you prefer using as well. So jumping straight in we're going to have a look at the pen tool first. You can find it over on the left hand side and if I zoom into our template here you can see we have a few exercises just to show you how the pen tool works. So I can start by just clicking anywhere in the document. In this case I'm going to recreate a square here. So I'm just going to click once and you'll see we get a preview path line from the anchor point that we've just plotted. If I click again we can create another anchor point and keep going from there. Now if I hold shift that will lock our path to 45 degree angles so I can either go vertically straight up or at 45 degree angles horizontally across. Now another good tip here is if I press command on my Mac or control on a PC I can actually alter the last anchor point that I just plotted so I can move this one back to where I want it to be. Again, I can hold shift and that will lock this to a perfectly horizontal line and I can finish up creating this square. Now when I get back to the first anchor point, you will see next to my cursor there's a small circle and this just denotes that we are going to close this path. So we're creating a closed square shape here. To the right of this we have a Pac-Man shape that we're going to recreate. So instead of just a circle, we're going to do a mixture of curved and sharp edges here. So I'll start at the kind of bottom part of the mouth here. So clicking once again, you can see we get our straight line. So to create a curved line, all I need to do is click and drag. And again, I can hold shift and that will lock these handles to a perfectly horizontal line. And these handles basically control the flow of the curve going through the anchor point here. So the more I stretch it out, the more severe the curve gets and vice versa. We can adjust all of this after we've plotted it as well, so don't worry. Again, if I hold command, I can always go back and adjust these handles or the anchor point itself, move that around. I can also, by holding alt, adjust just one side of the curve, so just one of these handles. So by holding alt, I can click and drag and this will allow us to create sharp points as well. So we'll show you that as we go around here. I'm just gonna press undo. So we'll keep plotting around here. Now a good tip with the pen tool is we want to essentially try and create as few anchor points as possible when we are creating designs. This normally gives for a better flowing line and a more simplified and clean look. So in this case, we have anchor points around each edge of the circle. So top, bottom, left and right is normally where you would find anchor points on a perfect circle. Um, in this case we have this cut though, so I can click once here and I will get go back to a sharp corner here, it's just a normal anchor point and again I can finish this up by simply clicking. The other option I could have done if I press command Z to undo is if I click and drag just to get some more curvature out of that path. Again like we were saying I can hold alt here and I can drag this handle back into the anchor point and that's just going to get rid of it and then I can continue my path here. So I'll just finish this up. Okay so this isn't perfect you can see the flow of the line isn't that smooth but what I can do is grab my direct selection tool and go and adjust any of these points. So it's quite common that we have to do this when we are creating these kinds of paths. It's just all about trying to create a nice flowing line with the pen tool. Especially when we're dealing with curved anchor points, this is more of an issue. That will do for now. Another quick tip is under the pen tool, so if I click and hold over it, we get add anchor point, delete anchor point, and anchor point tools. So these kind of do what they sound, the add anchor point tool. I can click anywhere along a path and if I grab my direct selection tool now, we have another anchor point that we can manipulate now. The delete anchor point tool is the exact opposite. So again, just hovering over any of the anchor points, I just need to click and that will remove it. Lastly, the anchor point tool, this allows us to manipulate our curved anchor points. So I can either add 
curvature to the normal anchor point so in this case you can see I'm dragging a curve out of this sharp cornered anchor point press undo and I can also do the opposite if I click on an anchor point that's already curved that will get rid of the curve handle so another useful tool to know okay so moving across we're going to look at the curvature tool now and then we're going to have a look at a more applicable use of each tool so the curvature tool can be found right next to the pen tool I'm going to select it now and this works slightly differently so if I click once you'll see we don't get any kind of preview line for the path and it's not until we click again that we see this so I clicked again and you can see we just created a straight line but if I move my cursor away we now are getting a preview line for a curved path so what this tool does is it will essentially try and anticipate the best curve based on the anchor points that you plot so if I just keep clicking you'll see the, the path will continually adjust on both sides of the anchor point. So it's just trying to achieve optimal curvature between each of the anchor points. Now, this is all very well and good, but these are obviously all curved points. But to get a sharp edged anchor point, all we need to do is double click. So I've double clicked and you can see we now have a sharp edge here. Then go back to the start, you can see the line is already previewing that it will change if I just click once but again if I want this to be a sharp point I just need to double click so I'll just delete this for now so to create a square I'm gonna have to double click all the way around so in each corner I'll double click and that's gonna create our perfectly sharp corners and again at the end if I just click once you'll see we'll get a curved line I double click though we can make this a perfect square. So this is more helpful for paths that require some sort of curvature, hence the name. Um, so on this circle, we'll start from the bottom and I'll just plot this round. So again, getting around to this side, I'll double click. Double click for all of these sharp points and then back to the start, I'll click once. and. It's very easy to create an object with nice flowing lines in it. So down below these examples you'll see we have a very rough sketch here. Now we're going to recreate this. We're only going to focus on the flame element for now. For this video, if you want to try the logs that sit underneath it at home, then feel free. On this side we're going to use the pen tool and then we'll use the curvature tool on the other side to kind of highlight the differences in ease of use and speed. So I'll go back to my pen tool here and starting from the bottom I'll click once. So like I was saying we want to plot this in as few anchor points as possible. What I can do is I could go all the way to the very top here however that might. You can see I have to drag quite far out to get the desired curve here but we'll try that and what I'm going to do is with my alt key held I'm just going to bring this curve handle back in because we want this to be a sharp point go down to the bottom of this section of the flame, click and drag again. Again holding alt, so I'm just repeating this process the whole way around here. And there will be instances where you need to plot a few more anchor points depending on the complexity of the curve and the path you're trying to follow but in this case this is quite a simple thing we're trying to trace here so it's not quite as important for me here. Now if I go back down to the bottom I can just click and drag again and you can see it's only going to affect the right hand side of the path uh, from this anchor point so that's also very helpful so I'll go with something like that. And what I can do is just going into my layers, I'll turn off our background layer just so we can see the illustration by itself. And I think this is pretty good from the off. A lot of the time you do have to make some adjustments just to get the flow of the lines a bit nicer, but I think this is looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is just bring this side in slightly just to get a bit more balance. Okay, we'll turn the layer back on. Okay, so now on to the inner section of the flame. Um, again, I'm just going to click once to start this. Go up to the top point of this flame. Holding Alt will bring that handle back in. So it really is just repeating this process for this kind of design. And then we'll go back to the starting point. This one may need another anchor point here to get a nice flow. 
think it probably will. So what I'll do is leave that about there. And another shortcut, instead of going and selecting the add anchor point tool, if I just press plus on my keyboard, just tap it once, that will actually enable it. So I can just click now and I can go back to my direct selection tool and I can now manipulate this anchor point that we've added. Okay, so I think again, this is looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is just invert this so it's a fill color and then grab my intersection. It's a little bit hard to see. We'll flip this and then we'll make this a lighter orange here. Okay, so moving across, we are now going to look at the curvature tool, turn my background layer back on so we have the reference. So grabbing this now, we can start by just clicking again. And this one is different in the way we need to approach it. So we can't just go straight to the top of the flame. We have to actually think about the curved point. So we need to plot our curved points sort of in, in the center of the path that's been curved. So in this case, I'm gonna go about halfway up the flame sketch here, click once, and then take this up to the top double click and this is where having a fill can be a little bit tricky so I'm just going to press shift X and that's going to switch my fill to a stroke that's a quick shortcut for you and then coming back down again I need to click once in the middle of this curve and then double click at the bottom and again we're just going to be repeating this process as we go so it's a single click for the curve double click at the bottom and this is creating some some nice curved lines already for us so in this scenario we again we may need to add multiple curve points here so I'm just gonna click once take this back down and I want to double click but I feel we need a little bit more width up at the top so again I don't even have to press the plus key or use the add anchor point with the curvature tool selected I can actually add more points within this path so just hovering over it you can see my cursor changes it has a plus sign next to it and I can just click and instead of grabbing my direct selection tool again I can just click and drag so it's another benefit of the curvature tool we don't have to switch tools to kind of edit the points we can do it all with the curvature tool selected and when I edit these points it will continually adjust the flow of the line to suit the difference if I grab my direct selection tool is you can see the anchor points kind of change in appearance and if I start adjusting points the flow of the curve beyond the anchor points sitting next to this aren't going to adjust so it's always worth bearing in mind if I grab my curvature tool again and make these same adjustments it's going to change the curve beyond the point down below it as you can see there Okay, so moving on, we'll sort the intersection of the flame now. So again, clicking once, it's a single click for the curve, double click at the top. So in this case, I'm continually single clicking and then double clicking. Again, I'm gonna add two curvature points to this portion of the flame, just to get the flow of this working. The benefit of the preview line here with the curvature tool is that I can see how it's gonna look. So I'll maybe plot one more point down here and then double click to finish this. Double click again. When I double clicked there, I hadn't realized that I'd actually double clicked to start this path. So double clicking again actually changed it back to a curvature point. So it works in the same way. If I double click on a sharp corner, this will change it to a curved corner. So again, I'm just going to invert our fill stroke here. And there you have it. That's a very quick demonstration of the two tools. You can see in this scenario, there's not a massive difference in speed. They're both fairly quick to use. However, I would recommend the curvature tool in situations where you've got a lot of curved paths that you want to recreate. I think it's just a little bit more intuitive and much easier to get a smooth line out of. So there you have it, a quick demonstration of the key differences between the pen tool and the curvature tool. We hope you followed along at home. Do let us know how you got on and which one you prefer. Remember to like the video, subscribe for more content, and if you want to check out our full graphic design course, go to www.graphicdesignerpro.com. See you next time.